the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. They ain't supposed to be that, 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 that lie. The chief committed adultery. I don't say they did that. Right. But those who were caught up in it, or have been caught up in it, really like, ain't that bad. It's, you know, but, God had mercy upon them. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, you thought about it when you was in the world, at least for me anyway. Yeah, as, man. Out there chasing and, and, and uh, going after uh, the different girls and stuff. I didn't see nothing wrong with it. I didn't see nothing. <laughs> I personally didn't see nothing wrong with it until you come into the body of Christ. Until he told you. Huh? My thoughts are not your thoughts. Yeah. My words are right. not your ways. Exactly. So you were your own God, and you determined right. what was good, and you determined what was evil. Yeah. You, you yeah. know what's really funny about it is that because you had a child ago, like you were drunk, I don't have a problem with drunk. Because I yeah. was. I was jacked up. I mean, so like when I, a drunk come to church, like man, I need to get that brother converted. God right. fixed. Right. I'm really right. overwhelmingly assured that God fixed this guy. Why? Because He fixed me. Yeah. So, you know, if you've been in it, then it's, it's, you can walk with that person with some expect expectancy and with some. I got a You know, God gonna work it because He worked you. I so, got a sermon. So, sir. I got a sermon. What's that? Call the Trump in you. <laughs> Woo! Really? Don't, man, don't, 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 don't say Trump because uh, Jimmy going to come up after you now. <laughs> now we want to talk about the Trump in you. <laughs> yep. yep. So, so it's like, who, who can identify with him? I think that's how God moves him. He uses people that can't identify with other folks. And that's why I don't just jump on everything. It's like, man, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that. Where is God saying? I'm going to leave it alone. But I think if you don't have compassion for that person, one place you need to go is just be quiet. I mean, if you don't love that person, have some concern about their well-being, genuine concern about them doing well, leave it alone. God got somebody else to minister to them. If you're just talking about folks because they, they do what you think is messing up, okay. So your, your good work is that filthy rag. So what's that saying about them? <laughs> You really got nothing on them. You, know you got saying? nothing on them. I mean, the thing is that there's different conditions of the heart and the patience that every believer has to have for one another. I, I read the scripture this morning, it was talking about encouraging. Our job is encourage one another, edify, build one another up. Love each other. Love each other. Bear each other's burdens. Those are the spirits that bad infirmities that we. That, that's the piece I always look at. Yeah. If you yeah. want to exhort somebody, if you see somebody call the fault, do the spirit of meekness. No one is step God, you want to say in the record. And then yeah. this is the kind of attitude. But to say that, you know, I don't know, you remember 3510 checks when we were military? Yeah. You didn't point fingers at folks because you didn't like them. Right. You pointed fingers at them because it reflected on the whole unit. And whether you all passed as a unit was determined by what you all look like individually. Yeah. So we worked on each other that way. But the one thing I see about, you know, sin now. Is that when a person practices sin, they put themselves at the, at the mercy of the devil, man. That's a scary place to be. Well, the only problem yeah. I think about it with the the, the uh, practicing of sin, we we I think sometimes we think about the obvious ones, but the practicing unforgiveness, the uh, jealousy. Oh yeah, all of it. You are you you out of the camera, uh, Elza, just let you know. It, but it all has a, it all has an impact because mm -hmm. it, it affects your spiritual position in Christ. Yeah. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, then what's up? You ask for my name, I'll do it. Yeah, you know, I think I like that with that that uh second Corinthians 10 about the weapons of warfare. The whole purpose is to go after yeah. those strongholds. And this I think a lot of people come in, all of us come in. I guess I've I say all of us come in with strongholds that have to be torn down. They do. And and the only way you can tear down those strongholds is through the weapons that he has given. And you know it's funny, Bishop. I just thought about that. This just came to my mind. The weapons of warfare are not cardinal, but you know what? Just like in the military, all the movies in the military, we had to go through weapons training. Yes. And Bishop, I think that's a part of discipleship is yes. many of us got weapons. <laughs> it's almost, you know, like, hey, look, it's almost like the uh, casting you know. out the devil. You you have the weapon, you don't know how to use it. You don't want the weapon. Huh? You don't want the weapon. Because the weapons and stuff like fasting, 
<laughs> yeah, now you preach. Now you preach. Now you preach. Now you preach. This kind goes not out itself by prayer. The weapon that God has in the land. That's a weapon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, I think that's weapons traded it. But the weapons, God have mercy. Oh. All the weapons take the form of the child of self. Woo! And look at look at Jesus up doing that crowd winning. <laughs> Woo! That was the heck of that Did is he won? Uh, yeah. Did he won? Hey, so I think I think a lot of saints are not going through weapons training. No, we're not. Yes. And, and, no, because we live in a world filled with that, that what the church has been taught that it's all right to indulge yourself. Woo! Gain is godliness. And, Gain. and not die daily. To die oh. daily is, a, is unconditional. You don't want to hear about discipline. Discipline. The disciplines of the spirit. But the spirit of God brings you into limitedness and discipline and constraint so that so that what was once available to you is now available to God. Woo! Woo! Yeah. We try, and look, then we try to make ourselves discipline one another instead of trying to build one another. That's why thirtyfold and tenfold and fivefold right. and, and onefold. Yeah. We ain't talking about no thirty, no sixty. We talking about one, two, threefold. <laughs> but 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 where I, where I have found out though, <laughs> yeah, if you really desire to grow, God to grow you. You might not even want to want it. You know. Like, it, I mean, like you're speaking of strong, strongholds and normally from places where we don't want to get rid of. We don't want to lack that stronghold. We lack that, yeah, we lack that particular sin. But God will, he will allow, He, if you ask him to, if you know you're wrong, and you say, Lord, help me with this, I know I'm wrong. He'll do stuff in your life that cause that thing to become a, a, a derision to you. You begin to repulse it, be repulsed by it because it'll bring so much hurt and pain and suffering into your life that you ask, you start asking them to be delivered from it. Right. And that's, that's what I'm, I've, I've had to do in some situations. Like, Lord, you just go ahead and help me with this because I don't not want to do this. You, exactly. know, you gotta show me how not to not want to do this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he did it. And, and, and he does it. It's like, man, I, I know some sins I used to feel comfortable with, some strongholds I felt comfortable with. It's like, now, nah, man, I can't stand them. Because like, every time I enter into it, something really bad happens. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you, see, you, can, you can tell God, look here, make this thing an abomination to me. Nah, that's what I'm talking about. Nah, that's, a prayer. That's, that's, that's a prayer to pray right now. Right. That's, a prayer. that's a prayer to pray right now. Let there. me see this thing the same way you see it. Yeah. Let me see. Uh, there we talking. You know, that's and a I, prayer. That's you a know, prayer. I, I had the I had the mind was it when I brought it up earlier in the beginning. I, I, I wanted to say that our okay. garden is our soul or our spirit. And in that garden, all those thorns like Jim was talking about, and and like rocks, stony grounds are in our garden. And and as we grow in Christ, we we move those things that's hindering the garden, hindering the yielding of the fruits out of the garden. However, sometimes we want to pick that rock and put it back. Oh yeah, you do. That's why I think that prayer is a great one. Make this thing an abomination to me. You know, the word says confessing your sins is agreeing with God that it is sin. Woo! You said to confess sin is to say, yeah, God, I agree with you on wrong. It ain't saying like, I don't like it, but it's saying like, like I know it's wrong. Help me with this thing. And, 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 and he'll do it. Listen. It's irrational. You don't move the rock out your garden because you start with hitting your garden for growing. And then yeah. two weeks later, then you march it back and then put it back out there. Put it right back out there. Put and it right back out there. And look, the right. thing about it is, how hard was it to move it out of the garden? That means you got to put that much more effort to put it, to put it, back. it back in there. But you like that rock, though. That's why, that's that's why you ain't got it. <laughs> That's what it means when the enemy is able to affect blindness in your life. Woo! You can't see the 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 the, the foolishness. That's, that's true. Oh, hallelujah. The fallacy of what you're doing. Yes, sir. Men, I, I know me and one of my buddies down in, in Montezuma worked at Procter & Gamble. Had a trailer park on the side, man. He was doing good. He, he passed away from a heart attack. But he was in the business room. He said, he said, man, I've noticed this one thing. 
He said, am I working at Parker & Gamble? Am I being in business with this, with this real estate? I have found that there is one thing that is always the downfall of many of good men. Mm -hmm. He said, man, them jokers get out there and get tangled up with some woman on the side. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Destroy their home, destroy their, their family, their marriage, their relationship with their family, their standing in the community, their, yep. their, their place in the church. Yep. One, listen, just one outing that Lord got lured away by his loss and it trapped in that thing, destroyed a whole lifetime. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A whole lifetime, too. Oh, my good God. Any, yeah, any point it can happen. Any point that you slip and fall, it can happen. And then, you, like you said, the other foolishness is, everybody know crack, let's use that for example. Everybody know crack or meth is, is dangerous. But yet, people try it. Yeah. And I, I, ain't, I ain't mad that unsaved people try it. I know it. I got a problem with saved folk try it. Exactly, exactly. But you see, see, we used to, but, but at the same time, you have to understand that this vulnerability always exists. Yes, sir. And because the moment you stop trusting, the moment you stop looking to God, yes, the sir. moment you stop living by faith, you're yes. vulnerable. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. The moment you stop dwelling in, in, in his faith, he said, 15 he said, the me, right? The, when we start slipping out, going back and in, back and forth, every time we go out, that's our vulnerability. My favorite verse is Habakkuk chapter two, verse number four. Habakkuk two and four says, he, he, whose soul hmm, is not, is lifted up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's not upright. See, see, and it's up. He <laughs> basically said, it's up wrong. <laughs> Woo! You, you got that the wrong way. Yes, sir. Because the only people who are supposed to be lifted up is the one that God exalts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> we all humble ourselves and then let God exalt us. Yes, sir. Not for that he whose soul is lifted up is not upright. Yes, sir. For the dust shall live by, by his faith. By his faith. Yes, sir. It, it said it was an event. It said your life is supposed to be colored by faith. Come on. Come on. That verse is repeated. In Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Paul repeated it in Galatians chapter 3, verse number 11. He, he, the Hebrew writer picked it up in Hebrew 10, 38. And then he goes on to talk about by faith. By <laughs> faith. By faith. Moses. Everybody is doing things. Ain't nobody doing nothing out of themselves. Come on now. Depending on God. Amen. Hey, bitch, we're going to have to roll because it's 11 o'clock. I, I question. Yeah, I have, what, what, you, what? Anybody? What, Adam had a good point. Anything we want to, uh, to, 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 do we want to focus on doing CITs? And, and if so, which one would like to focus on next week? Well, see, I, I'm hoping now that you understand. You see how the CIT, CIT draws you in? Right. All the stuff you got to look at. Right. All the holes you got to turn over. Yes, and sir. all the things that you got to dig through. That's so that when you, so now if we were to go back and start talking about this parable, see your CIT will constrain you as to what you can talk about. Yes, sir. It does. And and and, and you know, but the biggest piece I think this the morning this morning was the the yielding of the sixty, the thirty, and the hundred. And what what are we talking about as far as the Third, yielding, I think we came to the point of there's, there's two parts, two components. Yielding yourself a hundredfold, and then the actual uh, being able, like I think Jim, you said, take care of self, bringing in others into the kingdom. You see, I covered all of that with one word. Well, yeah, well, yeah, you didn't show yours today, did you? Okay, let me give you, let me give you uh, one view of mine. Let's see, if, let's see if you can see it. You can share, you don't want to share? I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you look at it. <laughs> Let's see. I'm gonna see if you can see it. I don't know if you can see the screen. It looked like it looked like a bright light. You like a bright light? Yeah. There's there's something there. There's something. If you. Can, it's, it's on my it's on my other computer. It's on the right hand on your left side. Yeah, it's on my other computer. And yeah. I don't I don't know. Let's see my camera. I don't know that you. There I it see, is. I see it now. Yeah. Yeah. 
Can you see that? Yeah. Now I can't see the little words. I see the, the CIT as, and aspect of the kingdom of God. But the other one, I have to wear my glasses. Elder, can you see it? Uh, no, I don't. Let me see. What's up, bitch? One second. I, I read now. Uh, the coming. Hold on, hold on. Let me get it right. I you know, it. No. Okay, I see it now. The coming and flourishing unto increase of God's kingdom was determined by the hearer's peculiar heart condition upon conceiving God's word. Is that is that 18 words? That's 21 words. I thought so. Okay, I want to make sure because you know you can straight us to 18. That's 21 I, words. Yes, I, I realize I violated the law. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I like that. Yep, the coming and flourishing unto increase of God's kingdom was determined by the hearer, hearer's peculiar heart condition, yep, upon conceiving God's word. Yes, and you know, see like that's what we talked about today, didn't we? We talked about the heart condition. Yes. We did, and then like I said, that has an impact on what we're bringing into the kingdom. Amen? Amen. So I think we always track it, but like you say, that 18 knocked, locked me in. <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, you know, I, that eight, that's why I said that 18 thing, now it took some work to get it down to 21. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> I, I'm like, I got to find a way. But what I'm trying to get it is a very sharply focused, concentrated statement that gets at the very meat. For example, I, I told the guy the other day, I believe that when Jesus tells this parable, I believe he got something like this in his mind that, 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 that causes him to use all of these different, different components that's in the parable. You got truth the kingdom, but you got to come with it. But you got to come with it, they don't understand it. So let me describe it to you in this term. But I said what, what Jesus has in his mind is very compact and very precise. Because if you look at Jesus' teaching, Jesus doesn't have very long elaborated statements. He'll say stuff like, they got a hole in a reading position, but they got a sick. <laughs> Come on. Hey, look, somebody's trying to jam you too, but that's all right. Hey, man, I can hear him. I heard him. I don't care who's trying to jam, I can hear him. <laughs> Jesus has always been focused when he said so. Yes, sir. We have to dig for weeks and months to get into what he really talked about. But he got a way of saying stuff, man, that is concentrated. I see you, I see you, brother. <laughs> Something happened to uh, Bishop Mike a little bit, too, though, for some reason. I don't know why. One second, brother. I got <laughs> That's, I like that cup you got there. I got, I got five more. <laughs> I found them in a, I found them in a rummage still. <laughs> yeah, I went to the flea market and got that. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I let you know. Uh, how's that weight going? It is beautifully dropping off. <laughs> it is beautifully dropping off. It's one of the things I've been praying about. And the Lord has definitely moved. It may may eating an abomination to me. <laughs> amen, amen. Hey, did you did you so so you got some uh, a lot of good stuff out of this this conversation today? Today, the message. Man, it's great. I mean, I, you know, so anywhere else in the world, I want to study, but I, 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 even when I'm out of town, I still try to get. As you saw last week, I try to get online. I. Uh, this is this is this has been the growth for me. This has been I don't, I've learned more over the last few months than I learned the last four four five years. In other words, it becomes a, it's a collective studying and dwelling in on the word. Yeah, yeah you yeah. with men who are really trying to live this and trying to understand it so that it can manifest it. I think we're seeing a greater vision of the Lord, and we're trying to live up to it. We're trying to get there. Right? Did you did you hear his uh, CIT? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I had walked off for a second, but I can hear what he was. I, I, I kept the, bottom, the audio on. So I right. Can hear what he and did you you cut the part we're saying is really what we start off with was about the condition. Basically. Yep. Yeah, the condition yeah. of, the, of the heart. Yep. Yeah. So we, we, uh, we got the same thoughts going that we right there. 
right in the same form. Yep. Exactly, exactly. Vision, we're just saying is that before you even came, that's sound like what we were talking about, that CIT, yep. sound like what we've been talking about for the whole time, about the condition of the heart. But if, move it. Because if that component is necessary to bring others into the kingdom, our heart condition has a big role in bringing people into the kingdom. And I, yeah, so when you're witnessing, you got to kind of be that the spirit of God kind of say, okay, who I'm talking to. Yeah, yeah. And they're looking at, and they're looking at you. I'm in the concrete, and the nigga you waste a whole lot of time to get mad at that person. They look at you, little man. The concrete, go with that man. <laughs> but they, I think that's the point, right? They can, and, and this is the point. People can see. And then you want to get them and try to argue, fight with concrete, concrete can cuss you out. <laughs> yeah. But the thing about it, they can see if you if you're concrete trying to preach the concrete. Uh, oh no, that's a fight there. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's the whole point. A lot of people who have left or turned off on Christianity is when they see concrete trying to talk to concrete. And what we're saying, did you see that letter, Bishop? That we uh, I, I emailed it. You know. And, and they, they, it was sent to me, one of the guys that I do a constant uh, uh, back and forth of, 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 about the word, right? He's, he's, I think he's, he's, he's a good, good natured person. He, I think he's, he's not accepting Christianity as a time, but we go back and forth. As long as we're talking, we're going to keep doing that. But anytime he found sudden vision, there was ammunition to say, see, look at these religious people. <laughs> Bishop, that's what happened. They 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 said, see, this this is why I'm saying it ain't worth being uh being a Christian. Look at y'all. Y'all sit there and wrote a formal letter. <laughs> Elvin, formal letter telling yeah. them. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> yeah, but you, you know the thing of it is though, Pastor Taylor, we have seen that thing happening among us. And, and it can be a deterrent to some. The one thing that I'm looking forward to now is because we're getting the greatest vision of who Christ is and what he expects of us and how to align ourselves with him, is that we're going to see people delivered from those situations. Yeah. And we're going to see those people going on to deliver somebody else. We're going to see people healed and we're going to see these people raised up to heal other folks. Exactly. There's a legacy. There's a legacy to our, our heritage, I mean, to our, 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 our lineage. Yes, yeah, sir. That says, you know, some things we don't have to suffer. Come out. And, and the reason we're suffering is because of our alignment or misalignment with our Lord, with our God. Yeah. There's some things that Jesus Christ literally alleviated the suffering in, and, and we still suffer because we are misaligned. And until such a time as we can come into alignment and manifest those things, we're not going to have anything other than an argument. Yeah. And that's what everybody else has. Jesus and, and, said. And, and, and the oh, that's where I, that's the one thing. I'm sorry. I ain't going to say it there. Last week, I, it came up, but I never got it out. The kingdom of God come not in word, but in power. In power. That's yes. what Paul spoke. And yes. Jesus is talking about the works. He said, don't believe me for my words. Believe the works. Do my work. Right. And that's who we are. We right. literally are those people where we are bringing ourselves into an alignment where that stuff can manifest itself through it. Yes, sir. And when that happens, a lot of arguments going to go away. You know, you're going to need to say, okay, well, we don't want to do that. <laughs> well, you know, and, and what I like was that, like, if you take this is the earlier statement, Bishop, about the, 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 where a person condition was prior to coming into Christ. Amen. Man. Knowing all the mess and all the stuff they had done, that person was converted, is given more into the kingdom and ministry. So, what I'm saying is, if you take a, uh, in this case, that cop that letter was about homosexuality, instead of us trying to run that person away, elder that that person, if that person comes in, gets converted, becomes surrender all, uh, bishop, that person, it would be a more powerful witness. Yeah, it would. To other, you know person that may be a homosexual than any way you could be. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can't run them. I guess what I'm doing close. I said, you don't want to run 
That's why you don't run people off. You may not put them in a pulpit. You may not put them in the choir. But you can put them, you always want to encourage them to sit down and get word. Well, you know, I, I didn't say anything along this line because you probably don't want to hear what I have to say. Well, the only thing, only thing, did you, did you read our text, the conversation was going on? I think I read all the info. Yeah, and, and, well, and, and, and like I said, if you was, go ahead. In terms of priority, when it comes down to the body of Christ. Yes, sir. What, what, what you have to be concerned about when you've got the body of Christ, because inside the body of Christ, now, particularly these days, uh, you have a bunch of babes. A lot of babes in there. Yes, sir. And there is always a concern about anything that will hinder the baby from ever getting to the place where he's put. Yes, sir. So you have to, so you have to be concerned. I, I think the best place to see it, the best place to get a handle on what your, your attitude and what you ought to go about doing is probably going to be in Ephesians chapter 4 and 5. Yeah. In Ephesians chapter 4 and 5, because see, there he tells you that there is an obligation on the on the part of the body and all of its members, in particular those that have been given offices. Yes, sir. For the edifying of the body, it is the obligation of you to 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 maintain the unity of the spirit. Yes, sir. It, it, they, it, 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 if there's going to be oneness in the body, it is going to come through the sexual workers of the Spirit of God. Right. The Spirit of God is going to direct us and dictate to us what we need to do in order to maintain <clears throat> and sustain the oneness that characterizes us as being Christ. And, you know, the bit, Elder, the uh, vision, the only thing that uh, I guess when the world looks from the outside, if we single out a area, and yet we allow other areas to flourish, which we know have happened, right? We we know that adultery flourishes in the in the uh, aspect of different bodies of the Christ. We know that uh, fornication is is wide open in the body of Christ. You talking about you know the teenagers now? They come in and somewhere along the line they they're not holding on to the. I don't even heard it in a long time anybody talking about abstinence for. Let me, read, let me read a verse to you, for example, from Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number, number, number uh, 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as their children, and walk in love as Christ has also loved us, and has given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet spirit and safe. Yes, sir. But fornication. Yes, sir. And all uncleanness. Yes. See, he doesn't distinguish. See, exactly. See, See, this, this is the problem we got, you see. See, yeah. he doesn't distinguish. Exactly. Fornication and all uncleanness. Yes, sir. Or covetousness. Let it not be once named among you as the covet state. Exactly. Exactly. And, and therefore, we should approach it all in that perspective. And that's yeah. all I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100% of that. And I think when we got this conversation initially several months back, a couple of months back, the reason that it, it can't target was because it was the greatest lobby in the world system at that time. It was a very active lobby. And uh, politically, it's gaining, uh, it's gaining uh, ground. And uh, to our children who are making decisions toward carnality or toward spirituality, my, if you ask our grandchildren now, uh, some of our children say, well, what do you, how do you feel about that? Even in the household of God. I don't know if anything wrong with it, it doesn't bother me. But because of the push of it, it is being normalized in the sight of the entire society. Um, that, but, it, but it should be normalized in the church. It, it, that's right. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But, but when I say society, I mean even that, that structure, even the, 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 the body of Christ has taken a a more uh, uh, softer, 
relaxed attitude, right. compromised attitude. Well, and, and